if you will, that generally the Catholic Church is kind of opposed to revolutions kind of mm-hmm. in general. And that's, but that's where it goes down to, it's a case-by-case thing. It's the same thing with just war. Mm-hmm. Ideally, we wouldn't have to wage war on anyone. Yeah. It's due to our fallen nature and due to bad situations, yes, we have to fight. And there are certain cases that it's justified, and there are certain cases that it's not. Yeah. It's not something that you do lightly, but in the cases where it's required, yes, you have to do it. I think it's the same with political. Obviously, the for any sort of thing, there are the second and third order effects that you have to consider. So something like the French Revolution is a totally different situation. And it's and that's another where we're against revolutions, and a lot of times it's the using the same term for something different. So the French Revolution was very mo- a very different revolution than the Communist Revolution. There are revolutions in a vein where it's the violent overthrow of all established authority, the destruction yes. of the political order, the yes. reimagining of everything, rather than what is honestly more of a secession of we're going to maintain, we will make changes, but we're basically going to maintain our same self-government we've had mm-hmm. and go break away and be over here. So, uh, so fast forwarding then into in, in terms of managing America now. I mean, as we're recording this video, uh, certain cities in America have been sacked by Antifa protesters. Um, it, it appears that we're re- refighting the Civil War, statue by statue, building by building. We're we we we're just coming out of this uh, fake phony pandemic that uh, that that. Uh, cap- in, to which the entire Catholic infrastructure in the United States capitulated um, almost overnight. Um, so if you were to imagine or reimagine America, are you pleased with our our situation now in terms of how we govern ourselves and self-govern ourselves? Or would you like to see America uh, revert to a more constitutional monarchical structure or or what, what are your thoughts on that as of as of today i think we would be a lot better off if we followed the constitution a lot better yeah and that's getting back to well, how that, we were founded that would be an improvement on all sides right yes <laughs> but if we could at least follow the constitution that would be really nice <laughs> right <laughs> okay but I mean, in general of i don't think i mean and it it's always a very dangerous by your fruits, you shall know them, but it's mm-hmm. also very dangerous of looking back at the prison. Well, that worked out pretty well, mm-hmm. so we should do that every time. Yeah. There, I mean, it, it happens that you can, God is able to bring good things out of evil that man does. Right. So right. arguing that because we're in a good situation now, it meant that all the decisions made previously were good, it's very shaky logic. Okay. However, I'm very glad I'm not a Canadian. <laughs> no offense to Canadians out there, and I, I've known very good Canadians. Listen, and you have a very we, at Restoring proud... the Faith, we have a lot of Canadians That's, in our audience, so you got to be you can't insult them. Uh, They're and very polite people. They are, and Canadians <laughs> have a very proud history. Recently, it's left a lot to be desired, more yeah. so than America. But well, I don't think anybody who's watching this podcast right now on YouTube or wherever you're consuming this media is a Justin Trudeau fan. I, I would assume that would be <laughs> would, very rare. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So you so you've had this change of heart, mm-hmm. and now you're thinking, okay, I, if I were born in if I were 18 years old in 1776, I would have picked up a weapon, not for His Majesty King George III, uh, but for the revolutionaries because of the principle of subsidiarity, and that is the distinction that you're drawing between the American Revolution 1776. And the French Revolution of 1789, which was an absolute total rejection of all authority and a beheading yes. of the king. Yes. And that was the other of, there was never an intent by the colonists to go. They did try to annex Canada. They thought the Canadians would like it, and that failed miserably. Uh-huh. But there was never an intent, there was never a thought of, even if they had the means of going to England and destroying right. Parliament. Whereas the French Revolution, that's exactly what they did. Right. They slaughtered people. They murdered people. You know, the September massacres where they were just slaughtering priests and religious who'd been arrested because they were religious. And it was intentionally the complete destruction of the social order to the point that they had a immoral woman dressed as the goddess of reason oh, gosh. in Notre Dame Cathedral. Yes, yes, it, yes. Uh, They turned it into essentially a faux pagan temple. So, yes. I mean, it's... Hideous, heinous. It, completely. I mean, it's, that's yes. kind of the depths of depravity of man. That, in many ways, honestly, has never really been seen again in the West. Wow. Because even the Nazis, most of the non- 
the horrible things they did, they took people away and they did that to them. The French Revolution, they're doing in the streets. Wow. So in that way, it's, I think, very reasonable that over the last several hundred years, it's the most horrific thing that we've seen. Well, you've seen, you, you heard it here on Restoring the Faith. Andrew, uh, thanks for being with us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Andrew uh, has said that um, the French revolutionaries were worse than the Nazis. And um, that is actually a pretty revolutionary idea, one that I frankly support. And uh, if you read a little bit more into it, I think you'll find support for that as well. Hey, if you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, Restoring the Faith Media. This is the Living the Faith Show. And uh, if you really like what we're doing and you want to support us and allow us to continue, consider becoming a patron. We're on Patreon. And you can follow us on Twitter and uh, like us on Facebook. And we do post some red-hot memes on Instagram, too. So uh, thanks for watching the show. God bless you, and we will talk to you soon. Living the Faith Podcast, brought to you by Restoring the Faith Media. RestoringTheFaith.com